welcome to this webinar. This is a shorthand lunch and learn on the secrets behind award-winning storytelling. I'm your host. Uh, I'm Dawn Murden, VP of Customer Success here at Shorthand. Uh, just a few housekeeping points to start with. This webinar will be 45 minutes uh, long in total. Uh, this session is recorded uh, and will be shared with you afterwards. So if you do you know, want to watch anything back or share it with any colleagues, be safe in the knowledge that the recording will be available. Um, I'm also uh, showcasing a shorthand story today. So I'll make that available after the session as well uh, so that you can look through uh, all of the stories and everything we've shared today. And also, I do have my colleague Manuela on the call as well, who's going to pop some links um, into the Q&A throughout the um, call as well, just so that you can uh, take those. And as you see, she can use the chat, so that's good. <laughs> uh, brilliant. OK, so we'll kick off with the agenda then. So just so you know what we're covering today, firstly, a bit of an introduction uh, into these lunch and learn sessions, and then also a little bit about me as well, just so we can get to know each other. Then we'll talk about the characteristics of award-winning web content. So while each award, um, established award and award categories are going to be quite different in the guidance of what they're looking for when you nominate your stories for them, there are some key characteristics that every award-winning story has. So I'll walk you through those. Then we'll go through an overview of four award-winning stories. Uh, so four stories that have won previous award and kind of break down why, what makes those stories special. Then I will talk a little bit about how shorthand can help you win awards for your web content. Uh, in previous years, shorthand has run its own awards, um, but our strategy has actually shifted in the way that we're going to help recognize your success. Uh, so we are no longer running our own shorthand awards, but rather helping you apply for already established awards. So I'll shed some light on that new strategy as well and how we can help you there. Uh, and then we'll go on to other resources. So just some additional resources that you might want to explore after this session. And then I will stick around for a few minutes at the end uh, just to see if anyone has any questions at all. Brilliant. OK, so firstly, introduction then. So a little bit about these lunch and learn sessions. So we run approximately four sessions a year on special topics from design tips to new feature overviews. Um, they are designed to help you get the most out of shorthand and elevate your content strategy. And each of these are hosted by a member of our expert customer success team. Uh, a little bit about me. I'm based uh, just outside of London in a little place called Chesham uh, in the UK. I joined Shorthand in 2017, originally as training and support manager before moving into the role that I'm in now. Um, previously, I worked as a journalist in National Women's Weekly magazines uh, before moving into business journalism after both a trade publication uh, and then a, um, a C-suite membership organization after that as well. Now, I lead the shorthand customer success team and look after a number of customers directly uh, as well. And please feel free to connect with me on, on LinkedIn. Um, and there's also a couple of ways that you can connect with me after today as well, if you wanted to find out more about the awards and how we can help. But we'll move into the characteristics of award-winning uh, web content. And uh, I'll keep my camera on for now, but then when we go through these stories themselves. So we'll turn my camera off um, just to really you know, show the, showcase those stories uh, in all of their uh, glory and the, the way that they deserve to be looked at. So characteristics of award-winning web content. So I've broken it down. I'm sure there's more. I'm sure this list could probably be more exhaustive than it is, but I've broken it down into uh, the following, really just to get us thinking about what makes an award-winning story an award-winning story, what makes it special. So firstly, and I think this is the real key one, is the story has a clear purpose or objective. Award-winning stories make an impact. Uh, they educate or inform the audience. They raise awareness about an issue. They might break down a complex issue to make the audience understand it better, inspire the audience to maybe do something, maybe work for a particular company or purchase a product um, or donate to a worthy cause. 
if the story doesn't have a clear purpose or an objective, uh, I would say, should it be told? Is is it something that needs to 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 be put together and, and put out there? Um, and if the story has more than one purpose, and we do see this happening with some of the um, you know some stories that are being told, is that it can be quite confused in terms of the impact they're going to make or not make much impact because maybe the story is trying to do too much in kind of one you know one story. Um, so if it is if it does have multiple objectives then should it be broken down into several projects instead so you can really kind of break down those objectives and think about you know this project is going to do this and this project is going to do that uh, next on the list is it is visually beautiful with a with a cohesive uh, design um, award-winning stories are stunning they look beautiful they are on brand. Uh, they use the right logos, fonts, and colors for the brand or to maybe reflect a story topic. They use suitable assets that are correct resolution for the web, load well, and work seamlessly. They consider how the text and visuals look together as well and how they complement each other. They consider white space and how design elements can impact massively on how the reader moves through the narrative and kind of step by step. And then this one is a topic of its own uh, when it comes to design. So in all honesty, I can't do this subject uh, justice in this webinar. My colleague Paul actually ran a session um, on design for non-designers uh, last year. So I definitely recommend watching that after this session if you're keen to learn more about that and how design can impact your storytelling. And Manuela is going to pop that link in the chat as well. Next up is it's written with the audience and purpose uh, or objective firmly in mind. Uh, Award-winning stories are targeted at a particular audience. The creator of these stories already know that audience well, perhaps because of research they've done previously, or they've researched that audience to find out what they care about, what makes them get out of bed in the morning, what makes them tick. Uh, and they're speaking directly to that audience in a chosen voice. Um, so you know, either a brand voice or an organization voice, uh, depending on who you are, who you are as an organization. Next up, the story takes the reader on a journey. Award-winning stories are memorable because of this. They are cinematic and they signpost the reader through the narrative. Um, so a simple way of thinking about that might be a story navigation, um, perhaps a, just a navigation at the top or a navigation down the side that shows the reader kind of how many components or chapters there are to the particular web piece that they're looking at. Um, is it a quick read or a long form piece? Again, it's good to signpost the reader on that. So the, giving the reader the sense of kind of, what are they getting themselves into? What kind of journey are they about to be taken on? Are they on the train? Are they in the office? Do they have a lot of time? Do they have little time? And kind of giving that setup of um, what they can expect from, from that story. And then again, going back to, is it a single piece? Is it a single story with a single or maybe a couple of objectives? Or is it part of a multi-page project? A good example of this might be an annual report. Annual reports, um, they are stories. They tell the story of an organization of a brand. Um, they, of course, have to um, make sure they're meeting many guidelines of corporate governance. Um, and oftentimes they're in a PDF form, but there's a real opportunity to have a digital bridge of an annual report and make that really, really, really engaging. Um, and of course, they're long. Uh, so again, sort of signposting the reader on that. Or maybe it's not one continuous story. Maybe it's a, a number of pieces that are kind of strung together on a landing page. And that's the annual report and how you put it out there. We've seen annual reports work really well that way. Next up, you've considered what action the audience should take after reading the story. And you've included a clear call to action for them to follow, most likely at the end. If your call to action is not at the end and it's in the middle of the story, you're going to make sure that um, you open a new window. <laughs> so you're not taking the reader away um, you know, from, from that story too early on in that journey. You're, you're keeping them engaged right to the end. Um, if for some reason that 
works for the flow of your of your piece maybe you're okay for them to move on after that if it is a landing page and they have a way to get back um, in that kind of user journey it depends on what the story is but most important thing is that you have a call to action you're thinking about um, what, what they're going to do next because award-winning stories have high engagement rates um, they engage the reader and consider that never-ending engagement they've got the attention of the audience so they're captured uh, and then they consider what the reader might like to, to do next. And then finally, and very importantly, it works seamlessly on all devices. So especially mobile, where the majority of web traffic is coming from, this one is an absolute must. And if the story doesn't work seamlessly, sorry, seamlessly uh, or across all devices, uh, it's failing the audience. Uh, and it shouldn't win an award. Um, if we think about if something doesn't you know, work as well on mobile or desktop, you've potentially lost that person for, for, for good. They're probably not going to come back and, and read that story. If they're really interested in the topic, um, then they might maybe find a way of you know, rereading that story on a different device, or if they particularly already love your brand or the organization or love what you do or feel passionate about the topic, maybe they'll find a way of reading it. But that's a big maybe. Um, and of course, you want to ensure that you're keeping all of your audience members engaged. So that concludes that part. I hope that's a bit of food for thought there. I will now turn off my video and go through some award-winning stories. Uh, now, as I said, my colleague Manuela is on the call today and she's going to add links to these stories so that you can open each of them and explore firsthand, either as I speak, please feel free to open them up, um, or after the session today so that you can explore them in your own time. We won't have time to go through all the stories together, nor would I uh, be able frankly, to do any of these stories justice by just showing you showing them on my screen and, and walking you through them. I think it's important that you engage with these stories firsthand yourself. But what I'm going to do is just focus in on a few key aspects during the session and, and kind of reflect back to those characteristics so we can get thinking about you know, how, how those characteristics really come through on these particular stories. Sorry, I'm just going to take a sip of water. So the first story that we're going to look at is 182 Days of Putin's Unjust War. And this won two awards uh, in the uh, 2023 Webby Awards. So it won the websites and mobile sites the best use of photography. And it also used the, uh, sorry, won the People's Voice uh, winner um, in the Webby Awards. So uh, in case you're not sure sort of who um, the US State Department is, uh, the US Department of State is an executive department of the US federal government. Uh, they are responsible for the country's foreign po policy and uh, relations. Uh, this particular story, this is a solemn, solemn and harrowing photo essay, and it reflects on 182 days of the war in Ukraine. Um, August 24th is Ukraine's National Day, a holiday celebrating its declaration of independence uh, from the USSR in 1991. Uh, but last year, that date also marked six months since the start of Russia's invasion and the nation, uh, sorry, on the nation of, of Ukraine. Um, the aim of this story was to reveal the brutality of the war and show support of the people uh, of Ukraine. And um, that it has an intro. So it starts with that looping um, video that shows some of the, the dis destruction. And you'll know it's just the, the, you know, it's the scene there. There's no there's no people. It just it's really setting the scene um, with this video uh, and then it gives a, a little bit of an intro. So I have you know, sort of taken some of that content there to give you a bit of an introduction into to what this is about. And very importantly, and very importantly as well for today, I am going to um, call out that warning there. So this story does contain photos of a graphic nature that some viewers may find upsetting. 
of course, please, please be warned about this um, before you open that story. Um, and of course, just be aware of it as I as I walk through um, some of the moments in that. And um, this is such an important story uh, to tell. So this story, the way that they've put this together is, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a photo essay. So the story uses full screen images to reveal and shed light on the brutality of the war and really to fully immerse the reader in, in what's happening. Accompanying each of the images is a short but powerful extract of text to explain what's happening in the image. So there's a real sense of letting the image really speak for itself, but still provide that kind of accompanying context on the image as well. Um, and then it employs that throughout the story. Then it uh, does uh, break, break that up into, uh, it has a video here. So it kind of goes back to that, um, the scene setting video at the beginning of um, a residential block um, and the destruction of that building. And then um, at the end, it has that really important call to action, which reflects the purpose of this story, um, you know, which we kind of set up at the beginning there. And it sets up at the beginning there when it has that introduction. Um, so it is asking the audience, those reading this story, to share it, uh, to share it with their friends, their family, their colleagues, with their networks. Um, and that is the call to action. So I think, you know, please open this story yourself. Please have a look through it. Of course, please be aware of that warning. Um, it's, it's a very, very powerful story and extremely worthy of both of those awards, as I'm sure you'll agree when you, when you look through it. So moving on to the next story, uh, this is The Kingdom versus uh, Capticon, and this is by Arab News, and they won gold uh, for best data visualization in the 2023 One IFRA uh, Digital Media Awards uh, Middle East. So this story starts with a video, again, at the beginning um, of um, the drug that it's looking at. And in case you're not aware of uh, sort of Arab news, so Arab news is an English language daily newspaper published in Saudi Arabia. And they have a whole section on the website called Deep Dives, uh, where it's really for long form, uh, for long form storytelling that they do. So this particular deep dive is the result of a 14 month investigation by the team into the drug Captagon which is a potent and toxic drug that is destroying lives across the region. So as I mentioned with this story, it starts with that looping uh, video of the drug that it's investigating. And it says very simply here that it's an investigation as well. So they do that on a lot of their stories to signify what it is and kind of that setup. So again, talking through the, the purpose, the objective of this story, this is investigative investigative journalism it is trying to shed a light on issues that otherwise you know, maybe people would not be aware of. Then we have uh, a text intro here which really kind of sets up the story and then one of the main components I'd like to kind of call out in this story is um, with these investigations they often talk to of course people uh, affected um, by it and um, this is um, uh, what they do here is they have this pull quote and then as they as we scroll through, they have this quote, this pull quote, and they highlight aspects of it. Just so it, it really helps with that quote to then sort of as the reader, you're, you're thinking, what is the most important part of that quote? What what's what? And then the creator's thinking, what does what do they want the reader to take away from that? Um, so they're really honing in on that. And of course, we have a video over here as well from a Capticon dealer who's you know, talking about their experience there as well. So it really brings that personal element um, to this story. And then after that, we go into uh, this sort of uh, visualization 
they have a num number of images that they're showing uh, to really, again, break down to the audience what this drug is. Not only what it is, um, but actually what it does to the body as well and how it impacts on the body. And they break it down in a really visual way. So again, just kind of going back to that objective, you know, they're, they're breaking down perhaps what would be quite a complex issue to understand um, and all of the different facets of it as well. But very importantly, in a, in a visual way, um, it's you know memorable then, it's stunning. The reader will um, remember the information that they've taken on board throughout that. So moving on to uh, the next story, and this one's a little bit different as it's um, less a story than a, than a whole strategy. So I will look at one of the particular stories that they've put together, um, but this is really about their their whole strategy in in what they're on what they're doing. So it's perspectives, life at Relics by Relics. They won silver for best data led employee engagement at the 2023 Data Comms Award. just to pull that up there so you can see that's the landing page so relex is a FTSE 100 company uh, they are a global provider of information-based analytics and decision tools for professionals and business customers they serve customers in more than 180 countries and have offices in about 40 countries and they uh, employ approximately 30,000 people of whom most um, almost half, sorry, are based in uh, North America. And that is important to sort of where we're looking at this strategy. So um, to talk about the strategy a little bit, in 2019, they launched a campaign which gave a platform to human interest stories uh, told by employees. Since they've launched that, the campaign has grown to feature over 1,500 employees across the company. And through employee opinion surveys, the internal comms team gathered valuable research that informed their strategy. The results speak for themselves. Engage engagement increased by 13%, advocacy by 15%, and referrals by 7%. Uh, so really, again, really important to bring that in because they won an award for a data-led employment employee engagement strategy. So this is really at the heart of, of what this is about. And of course, when they submitted this award, they would have talked about that data and had that to hand. Again, purpose, objective, impact is very clear to see in this. Uh, and that's why they won an award uh, for this strategy. So this is a landing page so that employees can find all stories um, they profile um, like different employees in all of these stories. We'll look at this one in particular. So life before relics. Uh, and this is a lot of these stories, they're human interest stories. A lot of them are fun, the light. They are, um, you know, many of them are more serious uh, as well. Um, but this one is, 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 is quite a fun one. It's um, talking about someone's life before they're working at the company. And the way they break this down is they've profiled each of the em employees and talk about a little bit about what they do at Relics, um, but also what they did before Relics. So you can get to know your colleagues a little bit more. And they showcase the colleagues' personality with images and um, makes everyone feel part of a large team. So a, bit of a fun one there. Lots of colour. And then finally, we have an apologies for my pronunciation. This is an Austrian um, newspaper, so um, I am not going to pronounce this very well, but um, Furstenfelder Schnellstrass um, by Klein Zittung. Um, they were a winner uh, of infographics online for animated infographics at the 25th European Newspaper Awards. So let's open up that story. So Kleinzitgon, as I said, is an Austrian newspaper and they are the largest regional, regional newspaper in Austria. Uh, they do a lot of this type of storytelling where they are 
uh, sort of taking a topical issue that's happening uh, sort of locally within the region and really unpicking it, kind of delving into it for, for the readers and breaking it get down again in a very visual way. So here we have a looping video to start. Uh, and this particular story details the highly topical and debated build of the 860 million euro expressway, the S7, uh, which is a relief motorway due to open in March 2024. So we have this looping video to start, which shows the current setup of, of the motorway. And then we have uh, a text introduction. And then um, if you read through this, uh, you can, of course, translate it into your own own language. But it, the it, the actual visual setup of the words as well, they really do think about that point about how the text and the words, sorry, how the text <laughs> and the images and the visualizations work together. They really do think about that in the way that this is written and the words that they use, because the words themselves are a very visual setup, um, kind of talking about who they're talking to, where, how they got there, as they're interviewing the people involved with this um, road build as well. And then one of the things to call out here is the visualization of the road build itself. So they put together a number of images to sort of break down and they layer those on top of one another. So they have that descriptor text to kind of show what's or explain what's happening in the image as you look through and then it draws on the new relief road so you can see kind of where that's being built and for the audience of course um it's written with you know, the those that this really affects in, in mind. Um, but actually, this is really good for um, other audiences as well, so that maybe have no context about this road or where it is or where if they've been there. Um, it really, I've, I've not been there myself, it really makes me think about, okay, this is how this is being built. It makes it very, very clear to me as the reader what's happening here and breaks it down in a really, really visual way. So those are the four stories uh, that I picked today to, to go through. Of course, there are other award-winning stories um, that we, we could have looked at, um, but these are the ones that we've chosen. Try to give a bit of a flavour of different types of stories, different awards um, that could be won for those stories. Um, also, um, try to give a bit of a... Um, uh, as global possible representation uh, as well but um, it'd be great to know feedback on this particular pick of stories and um, of course if there's others that you might like to see from your own um, industry or maybe a particular category that you're, you'll be thinking about um, I'd love to hear from you on that so um, any feedback on this particular choice of, of stories would be very open to your feedback. But now we'll move on then to how shorthand can help you win awards for your web content. So most of the attendees today um, are already a shorthand customer. There's a small number of you that are not though. So if you're not yet a shorthand user, please do sign up and start publishing for free. And we can help you apply for establishers awards. So as I mentioned, we ran our own awards. Uh, the shorthand awards ran from 2016 uh, to 2023 last year. While we are no longer running our own awards, we can help you apply for already established awards, including those mentioned today. Uh, in fact, we've already helped some customers submit nominations to the 2024 Webby Awards. So please do contact us to find out more about that nomination support and funding assistance for your shorthand stories. Um, the contact us goes to success at shorthand.com. Um, you can also, of course, contact your ESM uh, directly. And Manuel is also going to pop in um, sales at shorthand.com there. Just if you're not yet a shorthand customer and you are on this um, are on this uh, session, um, if you wanted to find out more about our plans. 
and please let's continue the conversation um book in some time with me for a free awards consultation session uh you might be thinking about awards that you would like to apply for um maybe you're not sure which award or which ca category your stories might fit into so let's have a chat about that. We can talk that through together. We're also building a repository internally of all of the awards, um, content awards that exist globally. Um, we really want to build that up as much as possible so we can help our customers apply for awards. So um, yeah, look forward to chatting with you uh, if you'd like to find out more about that. And other resources. So. As I mentioned, we run these sessions approximately four times a year on different subjects, including kind of new feature overviews, tips and tricks, uh, and, and then also topics uh, like this. We've, we've done one on um, not-for-profit fundraising before, uh, design for non-designers, and then of course the awards today. So please do watch those previous uh, recordings if you're interested. You can also join our global shorthand community, Master the Craft. You might want to share challenges and ideas with other content creators. There's also a wish list there of features that you might want to see in shorthand, um, a showcase as well, in case you want to showcase um, your stories, uh, especially maybe if you've won awards already, or if after we've helped you, maybe you want to post there about uh, winning an award. Next up, sign up for the craft newsletter to get the best stories on the web delivered directly to your inbox for inspiration. So um, every fortnight we send out our craft newsletter uh, with um, featuring a number of the, the best stories that we've sent out there. So if you're just looking for inspiration um, or again, if you've won an award or um, after we've helped you, you've won an award, um, we would love to feature the, that in our newsletter as well. So an another way just to kind of keep the community uh, going and, and share learnings with, with one another. Great, well, thank you so much for listening. I hope you found that session useful and inspiring and very happy to answer any questions uh, that you might have. So please do pop them in the Q&A and I'll answer those. I'm just going to have a look because I think there's a few questions that have already um, been entered into there. So just, I'll have a look at those now. So first question or sort of question slash feedback, um, it would be great to hear the way the ways from the story creators and how they were able to customize these stories, e.g. the top menu of the last story. I've never seen that before in a shorthand story. So I think that would be this this menu um, uh, up here. Um, so you can create a navigation uh, within your shorthand stories at the top, um, but uh, you can customize that at the branded theme uh, level. So um, I think from memory of looking at this one, that is a, a customized one. I'm just going to have a little look just to scroll down to the bottom. I'll have to just have a look at that one in a bit more detail. It looks like it's either a customized branded theme um, or it might be coming from their website. But what you said there was really good good feedback around actually hearing from the story creators themselves. So we have in the past run um, a behind the story series and that is still running. Um, the frequency though has been um, perhaps a little bit more irregular on, on that one. So we're just kind of trying to find our groove into how often we do those. We did it as a webinar format and then we switched over into more of a video format. So I'll add that um, the link to the behind the stories webinar um, into the links of this story as well. So I think that will definitely be something that will be worth looking at. Um, and that's good feedback as well in terms of these webinars going forward. 
as we can think about um, you know, sort of inviting the content creators uh, onto these sessions themselves uh, to talk about what they've done. Regarding the customized navigation, though, we'd definitely recommend reaching out to us at success at shorthand.com to discuss that further. We'd love to understand um, maybe what you're looking to achieve there um, and kind of point you in the right direction to, to do that. Next question, where is that list of global awards, please? Great question. We're still building it. So I'm glad that there's appetite for that list uh, as that gives us a little bit of a push. We've got it internally at the moment. We're just sort of listing it out in a Google Doc in all honesty, um, but that's something that we would like to make available um, to our customers. Might just be something that we share um, ad hoc and on demand to begin with while we, we build it up. Um, but if you could, um, if you could send an email to success at shorthand.com, uh, just letting me know that you are interested in receiving that list when it's ready, we'll make sure that you receive that. Um, if you uh, don't happen to send us an email, that's absolutely fine. We will be sending a follow up after today with the recording and a link to this story as well. So if you prefer, you can just reply uh, to that when it's sent out as well. Uh, question, can we get a link to today's recording? Absolutely, that will be sent out afterwards, um, just once it's transcoded and then um, I'll, I'll add it in. And the next question, is there a way to see what kind of section types a story uses in code for example? Um, good question. Um, there, there isn't really a way to kind of see um, you could inspect the page and then you can see some of the code code there. Um, I guess internally at shorthand, we would be able to kind of tell more so what a se what section type it is. Um, for that, if you have seen a story, perhaps one of the ones today, that you would like to you know, find out more about how it's created and find out how you could sort of replicate that yourself or do something similar. Uh, again, it, please reach out to us at success at shorthand.com and we can we can give you a bit of consultation around that um, and, and sort of help you create what you're what you're looking to create there. I think that's a really good question as well, especially as in shorthand as we begin to um, we're always launching new features. Um, so sometimes when a new feature is is launched, um, you can sort of look at a story and think, okay, that's a reveal section, but there's something different there about that reveal. I'll give you a good example. This week, um, the reveal section now supports video. So that gives us a whole new use case for that section, which is really exciting, which we'll be sharing more information about that in due course as well, when there's some good examples to share there. Um, but that's released this week. That's in our support document. So you can find out more information about that. Um, but that, again, would be an example. So always great to you know, keep engaging with us, uh, keep talking to us about uh, what you're doing in shorthand, what you would like to do so we can tell you about the new features, how you can utilize them, um, and also understand what features you might like to see in the future as well. I hope that helps. Uh, can you add Google Analytics, um, Google Search Console? Um, so you can add any third party tracking code um, or, or provider into uh, shorthand. So you can do that in a couple of different ways. Uh, you can either do that via the branded theme um, or with the theme builder. Uh, so that every story that uses that particular theme will then have that code inserted into it um, or you can add it on an ad hoc basis either there's a section in the settings to add um, Google Analytics um, or you can add other third-party tracking ID IDs in, in the JavaScript code as well. I will put um, all the questions that kind of link to a support document I will add those in um, into this story when I before I send it over as well so I'll add the links about our Google Analytics uh, and also shorthand analytics as well. Next question. I've noticed that in full screen options, photos are cropped and there is no way to control the crop. Is there a way to control the photo crops when the photos are full screen um, as so many are in this demo? 
really good question. So in order to ensure that full screen immersiveness of the um, both videos uh, and images on the following sections, uh, text over media, title, reveal, and background scrollmation, uh, they all have images that are like full bleed. They go, uh, they fill the viewport of any device that they're being viewed on. So we have something called safe area guides um, that are in our support documents that show um, how to use these sections with the most impact. So I'll include a link to our safe area guides um, in here as well so that you can have a look at that afterwards. If you have any question about the safe area guides and how to use them, um, just please follow up with us, um, but I'll send that support document so you can have a read through that um, after today. Uh, so just see if there's any other questions. Um, can you explain a little bit more about the section types used in those stories uh, if you have time? So um, there were kind of a key takeaway um, with some of the sections I, I, I showed. Um, many of them were re reveal. Um, there are a number of reveal sections in there um, for, for that data visualization, um, for the walkthrough of the road being built, um, for the, you know, the, the essay, the photo essay, um, uh, 182 days at the beginning as well. There was a big focus uh, actually on the, re on the reveal section there. So that's the section I would definitely start with. Um, also some of the sections uh, were of course the title section as we enter the story, text section with the text and then background scrollmation. So those were the main sections that we, we looked at uh, today within those stories. And then some of those examples have amazing imagery. Is it still okay to use stock images if you don't have photographers at hand? Um, absolutely. And you would have noticed the image credits um, on the 182 days um, story as well. So some of those were purchased from, from Getty Images. Um, we do have Unsplash and Unsplash integration. So that's a royalty free image service. So that is a you know, it's built into shorthand. You can search for anything that you're looking for there. Um, for example, a mountain image. Uh, then you could uh, choose an image from, from there. And then when you add those, it actually automatically adds in um, the into the caption where the images come from. Now, of course, you can utilize any other stock imagery service that you would like to. You could look at Shutterstock, uh, Getty Images, um, Pexels is another free one out there. Out there, and Pexels also have a video version as well, so they have um, uh, videos that you can take for royalty free as well. So there's so many different options out there to choose from. Um, just be aware that when you use them, of course, the onus is on you to make sure that you're using the right uh, sort of copy, adhering to the copyright for those images when they are being used. Um, I think that's all of the questions. There was a question on pricing as well. So if if that's you and you have that question on pricing, please send an, uh, an email to sales at shorthand.com and they'll be happy to take you through all of the different pricing options uh, as well. But I think we'll um, finish there today as we're, we're just one minute before um, 45 minute, par minute past the hour. But thank you so much again for listening today. I hope you found that session useful um, and wherever you are in the world, please have an amazing rest of your day. Take care for now. Thanks everyone.